Hi there. Now, the speed of light is approximately 300 million meters per second. In fact, it's a value just slightly less than this. And that would mean that if we had the Earth, then this would be equivalent to light going round here just under seven and a half times every second. So if that's the case, how far will light travel in one hour at this speed? Well, the sum that we would have to do would be this, that the distance in meters traveled in one hour would be 300 million times 60, which would tell us the distance traveled in one minute, and then times another 60, which would tell us the distance traveled in one hour. And this is a very easy sum to work out. All we've got to do is 3 times 6, which is 18, times another 6, which is 108, and then just add on the end the number of zeros that we've got here. And that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have got 108 followed by 10 zeros. Now if I do this calculation on a scientific calculator, something like this one, 300 million times 60 times 60, when I press equals, you'll notice we get a different answer, or so it seems, than the one that I've got over here. Now the reason the calculator displays it like this is because long numbers have to be shortened to fit into the calculator display. Now 1.08 times 10, for instance, just moves the point one place to the right, giving us 10.8. 1.08 times 10 squared, 100, moves the point two places to the right, giving us 108. And 1.08 multiplied by 10 cubed, 1,000, moves the decimal point three places to the right. But here, we have to add on an extra zero. So we have 1,080, and so on. So if we've got 1.08 times 10 to the 12, imagine the point here and we move it 12 places to the right. We're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, giving us this number. So that's why we can write it like this. Now writing numbers in this style is often referred to as standard form or scientific notation. It takes the form a times 10 to the power n, where a is a number greater than or equal to 1 but less than 10, and n is an integer. So in this example, a was 1.08, which is a number greater than 1 and less than 10, and n was 12. Now what I want to do next is just run through some examples that work with this idea. The first three are very similar to what we've just been doing, but these next two you'll notice involve 0.0 type numbers. And finally, I've got a short exercise here which I would encourage you to have a go at. So before we start this, let's just remind ourselves you should be familiar with powers of 10 okay and also negative powers we're going to be looking at using these in this next section now we'll start with 635 for 635 remember to express this in standard form we've got to write it in this style where a is a number between 1 and 10 so for 635, we say that this is equal to 6.35. But in order for this 6.35 to be 635, I'd need to times it by 100, effectively moving the decimal point two places to the right. Timesing by 100 is the same as timesing by 10 squared. So this is going to be 6.35 multiplied by 10 squared. And there is standard form. Now in the next example, I've got 
So to express this in standard form, we need to make this into a number between 1 and 10. So we just say that that is 4.725 and then the 1. And in order to make this the same as this number, I need to move the point from here three places to behind this 5, which is the same as multiplying by 1000. And 1000 is the same as 10 to the power 3. So we've got 4.7251 times 10 to the power 3. Now you don't always have to have positive values. You can have negative values as well. So when it comes to writing this one in standard form, it's going to be minus, and then we write 6.7, so we start with a number between 1 and 10. And then we need to move the point from between the 6 and the 7, 1, 2, 3, 4 places. So we need to multiply it by 10,000, which is the equivalent of 10 to the power 4. So we have minus 6.7 multiplied by 10 to the power 4. OK, well, let's have a look at these ones now. 0.0 type ones. Well, with this one here, again, we've got to make it a number between 1 and 10, so it's going to be 7.2. But this time, the decimal point has to move to the left, one place, two places. It's like dividing by 100, or timesing by 100th, finding 100th of 7.2. And 100th is 1 over 10 squared, or 10 to the power minus 2. So this is 7.2 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 2. And for this one here, writing this in standard form, it's got to be 6.24. And the point has got to move back 1, 2, 3 places. So it's going to be times 10 to the minus 3, but moving back 3 places is like dividing by 1,000. So you're finding 1,000th one of it, which, as I just said, was 10 to the minus 3. 6.24 times 10 to the power minus 3. So got this set of examples here for you to try. Write in standard form these numbers here and then the reverse effect. I give you standard form numbers and you've got to write them as an ordinary number. So if you'd like to have a go at this just give you a moment to pause the video and when you come back we'll run through the solutions. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. So for the first one, 3,145, well, that's just going to be 3.145. And then we need to move the point to the right, so you're timesing by 1,000 to move it three places, which is 10 to the power 3. For 0 0.863, this is going to be 8.63. But this time, we need to move the point back to the left one place. It's like dividing by 10. So it's going to be 1 tenth of that value or times 10 to the power minus 1. For 210, this is going to be 2.1 multiplied by 100 to move the point two places to the right. 100 is 10 squared. 0.0007 now. That's just going to be 7 or even 7.0 if you want. Multiplied by, and then we need to move the point back 1, 2, 3, 4 places. So it's going to be times 10 to the power minus 4. So write as an ordinary number. So for this one, 4.6 times 10 to the minus 3, we just move the decimal point back to the left three places. So I'm going to get 0 0.0046, OK? If the point is between the 4 and 6, move it back three places. 1, 2, 3. You get that. 0 0.0046. 
And for 3.25 times 10 to the power 5, well, this time we move the point to the right five places. So you're going to get 3, 2, 5. The point will have now moved two places and you've got a further three to go. So we just fill that with three zeros. So I hope you were able to get those right. If not, you've been able to see at least where you may have gone wrong. And hopefully that's given you an introduction to working with standard form or scientific notation.